Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you to Big Picture Organization and Task Management on Mac, iPhone, and iPad. So Mac users, this is all for you. And I'd like to uh, give a special welcome and introduction to our two resident Mac experts. We have Matt Caton, our Director of Customer Solutions. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And we have Patrick Thompson, one of our senior support analysts, also uh, presenting as well. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. All right. Well, today's session is going to be filled with a lot of tips and tricks. And on that note, I guess, Matt, I will go ahead and uh, hand presenter over to you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm going to, going to uh, go ahead and show my screen. And first, let me start by saying we're really excited today about uh, demoing specifically on a Mac. Uh, you are uh, now working with three different hybrids here, uh, both Patrick, myself, and Shelly, uh, tend to bounce back and forth between Mac and, and PC. Um, and we have our favorites of, of the different platforms. But the great thing about the brain is that you can approach it from the Mac standpoint, from the PC standpoint. And regardless, there's going to be a lot of similarities between the platforms, when it, whether it's running on a Mac or running on a PC. So you may notice today, as I'm going through the demo, uh, that everything looks pretty much like it does when we demo on a, on a PC uh, with a few key differences. And we'll go ahead and point those Mac-specific differences out when we see them within the application. But we really wanted to seamlessly um, uh, be able to use the brain cross Platform. So whether you're viewing it on a Mac, on a PC, or even on a Linux machine uh, and syncing between uh, different platforms, everything is still going to be available to you. And I really like using the brain on the Mac because of a couple of Mac-specific features um, and also because um, I tend to think, like many people do, that a, a Mac user uh, tends to think a little bit outside the box, be a little bit more creative, and that really speaks to the usage of, uh, of the brain. It's a really creative, intuitive, um, and fantastic way to navigate through your information and visualize and access your information, and that really, I think, lends itself well to the, uh, uh, to the intellect of the Mac user. So it's a special webinar for me. I like using my Mac. I also like using my Mac products, and we'll talk about those today as well, uh, using your brain on your iPad and on your iPhone and interacting with them uh, through uh, multiple different devices. So let's go ahead and get started. Enough talk. Let's go ahead and dive right into the brain. And you can see that I have a brain open right now called eSolutions Consulting. This is a great sample brain that I like to use uh, to give people an introduction into how the brain actually works. If you are new to the brain, a few key things to remember is that pieces of the brain are what we call thoughts. And thoughts are the building blocks of the brain that you're going to be creating. And you'll notice when I click on a thought in my brain, it brings itself into the center of the screen and displays all related information around it. So here I've simply clicked on clients. Clients is now the key focus. And around clients, um, I'm seeing anything that is closely related to my organization's clients. Uh, so down below clients, I've got the subcategories uh, that I've created. Now, I could have just as easily created links to all my different clients. Maybe I've got 20, 30, 100, or 1,000. That would be a lot of different clients to click through. So I choose to create some subcategories, new clients, top five clients, by service type, and I'll navigate on through from there. And you'll see as I start creating new thoughts, when I decide to create a new thought uh, versus, versus link it to, link something, a file, a document to an existing thought. Um, above clients, we have what we call the parent thought. And what I really like about a parent thought is that you can have more than one. Now here, I've got a very simple layout. Clients is a main category under eSolutions Consulting. But notice if I click my way down to into my top five clients, and then I'll go to Time Warner. Aha, Time Warner, I click down through top clients. That's how I think of my Time Warner client. He's one of my big five. 
Um, but I could have also clicked down through media and entertainment, so clients by service type, uh, telecommunications. Regardless of how I'm thinking about my, my client, um, as I can create as many links or, or link it up to as many categories that it's related to. If I create a new category in the future, uh, top five grossing clients or clients in need of attention, in need of repair uh, or on-site visits and so forth, I can link Time Warner to those thoughts as well. So I'm thinking about my client in different ways and I'm always going to be able to access the information that I'm looking for. Now to the left of Time Warner, I see I have jump thoughts. And jump thoughts are something that's related to the active thought but doesn't necessarily fit in as a subcategory. And in this scenario, I'm linking to people. So these are employees at my organization, eSolutions Consulting, that are linked to or associated in some way with Time Warner. So Daniel, Fred, and Vin are all linked. And notice that I have identified how they are related to Time Warner. So Vin is the graphic artist. Fred is the primary account manager whereas Daniel is simply an advisor. We'll be talking about those link types and defining our relationships and, and links between thoughts as well. And finally, over on the right, we have what we call sibling thoughts. And here again is where the brain really stands out as a better way to navigate and visualize your information. If I were looking through a file and folder type of structure that we're all uh, aware of and, and know exists, um, I would have clicked down through a certain path to get to Time Warner. If I click through the wrong path, yes, maybe I could have a shortcut. If the shortcut is, isn't there, I, I end up searching again, looking and looking for that client. Again, here we were able to get to the information and I'm also able to see all related organizations, in this case, clients, uh, that fall into some of these same categories. If I were in a file and folder type structure, I would just see Time Warner and all the files associated, but I wouldn't be reminded that I've got some other top five clients that also fall into media and entertainment or telecommunications. And if I'm looking for just a, a document template or, or something like that, Time Warner doesn't have it, I know one of my top five clients or one of my telecommunications clients will have the document I'm looking for. Maybe it's a PowerPoint presentation or a, a, a PDF that I recently used. I can easily access related clients, clients that fall into the same category. So again, just another great way to navigate and visualize your information. So let's go ahead and start creating some new thoughts. I've got a new ad campaign that I'm going to be working on for Time Warner. I like to, in the brain, create new thoughts by doing a simple drag off of the child gate. Now, notice every thought, and you'll see this on every thought now on my screen, has three small gates. So there's the child gate, the jump gate, where jump thoughts are connected, and the parent gate. And I can just click and drag off of those to create a new child gate. Um, there's also the option of simply, if you've got your right set up on your mouse, you can right click to create a new child, new parent, new jump. And notice that I have assigned some unique keyboard shortcuts. Um, the brain has a long, extensive list of keyboard shortcuts that you can create. And you can see um, right now visualized on the screen are some of those shortcuts. And I can create shortcuts for all these different action items, depending on which ones I use most often. Um, so here you can see I can just hit my uh, command down key, command up, and command left uh, as a shortcut for creating a new child thought. But I like to be in, I've gotten in the habit, and I like to uh, let other people know, I think the easiest way is just a drag and drop off of the child gate. And I'll create my new ad campaign, ad campaign called, um, uh, let's call it, call home again. So this is the name of my new ad campaign. And notice that I have another ad campaign appearing here. When I mouse over this thought, see the world, that's an older retired ad campaign for this particular client. Some great information in there that I might want to reference. Uh, you can see that I've got my different documents, my launch party, my graphics, the research that I did, and even presentations that we submitted 
the final pitch, and so forth to our clients. So all those Word documents, PowerPoint presentations are all saved there. I might salvage some of those. We might come back to that. I might reuse some of that information for this new ad campaign. So here I am with the call home ad campaign. And I'm going to go one step further. Rather than just creating the thought for my ad campaign and dropping in all the documents, I'm also going to create a thought type. So I right click on the thought to create a thought type. If I don't see the thought type yet that I'm looking for, I can select to add a new thought type and just type in the thought name, assign it a color, an icon. I'll do that with some other thoughts in the future. But for now, I have my ad campaign thought type. And look how nicely that stands out. I can see that for this client, I've got a couple of Word documents, a PowerPoint, and two specific ad campaigns that were pre presented to this client. I can visualize them easy, w easily with that thought type. And we'll be talking about more about thought types uh, in just a bit. But let's go ahead and create our subcategories for my documents. I'm going to have presentations. Uh, submitted to the client, art assets, a lot of research, a lot of internal discussions, uh, documents, emails going back and forth between Shelly and myself, and, and uh, some uh, web page design and layout coming in from Patrick. So there's going to be all kinds of information here. I'd like to subcategorize that. I'm going to create an area for my uh, research, an area for my art assets, an area for my presentations, and let's say meeting notes. So notice that I'm actually separating these all with a semicolon. And a semicolon is a really great feature, especially if you're just getting started within the brain, to very quickly separate groups of thoughts. So I know already the types of groupings of thoughts I'm going to have for all my ad campaigns uh, for all of my clients. And this helps me create those thoughts really quickly. So if you're just getting started with the brain, that semicolon trick is really a, it can be a lifesaver. Uh, but let's go ahead and start bringing some, some information in. First off, I'm doing some research. Now, research is going to be everything from other websites uh, that I've seen. I like the layout. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to open up Safari. And uh, in Safari, let's say, for example, I find a website. Uh, let me open up a new Safari window. Sorry, it's taking a little moment. There it is. Um, so let's say I really like, uh, that was Bing, that's fine. I'll do a quick search for, let's say, Nike. Nike's got a great website, a lot of great graphics, and uh, just a really nice, clean layout. Uh, there's their website. Nice clean layout. I'm aiming for the stars here. I'm hoping that our developers can create a website that looks as cool as Nike. Uh, and maybe I'll make a little note that it's sort of slow to load. Um, so let's go ahead and just simply drag and drop from the address bar in my browser. I'm just going to click and drag. And whether you're using, I'm using, uh, I'm on a Mac, I use Safari. Um, I know a lot of people still hang on to IE and, uh, or use Chrome. Um, doesn't matter what your browser is, but uh, that address bar is the key to dragging and dropping links right into the brain. Now, obviously, I'm not shoe shopping while I'm doing some research, so I'm going to take some notes on this thought. Why did I save this note here? Well, I want to uh, click on the Thought Tool tab. And first off, we'll just rename this thought to Nike, so you can always rename a thought. Um, and I'm going to add a label, great graphics. So there's some great graphics on here. I really want to emulate this style of website for our client. Um, and I may have three or four different websites in the future. I'm going to be dragging and dropping a lot of different, can you do it, make it look like this? Can you make it look like that? Uh, so a lot of uh, different samples. I also want to keep some notes for this thought. So I'm going to go down to my notes, and uh, I'll just create ideas for design team. And I can create checkboxes. I can create um, uh, tables, bullets, whatever you'd like. I just really quickly want to create a few ideas, so I want to call this um, uh, nice, colorful graphics. 
I want to create a little note about uh, slow to load. So is there anything they can do about that? And uh, we've got a one month deadline reminding them we need to do whatever we can in one month before the presentation. So a lot of different features that will be available to you there in your notes area. Um, and you can hyperlink to other websites as well. If this doesn't work, try this, www.whatever, and insert a hyperlink. So uh, basically anything you can do in a web site designer, you can do right there in your notes. And it really, really makes it helpful for, uh, for all of uh, the individual files that you're bringing into your brain because each individual file, each individual thought has its own notes tab and those note tabs are indexed. So everything that you input into the notes are searchable. Another great, great uh, feature for navigating through your information. But we are not limited to just websites. Let me go back to uh, this particular thought. And now let's bring in some, uh, some other content. Um, for example, let me go over and uh, open up one of my directories. I've got some example ads and documents that I've been working on that I actually need to bring into the brain. A lot of these actually pertain to this particular um, uh, ad campaign that I'm working on with my client. And this is an email confirmation. So again, this is just research. Can we make our emails going out to our clients look like this? So this is a PDF that I have here in a local directory on my Mac. And I'm just going to drag and drop this PDF right into the brain. And notice it creates a thought simply called email confirmation. That was the name of the document. Now that's the name of the thought. Now the default, if you look closely, you'll see this little black arrow icon over the PDF graphic. And that is visually telling me that that is a shortcut to that file. So the file is still there in my directory. I created in the brain a shortcut to that file. Now, maybe that works for you. Maybe you are on a network and you're bringing in documents that are on a shared directory that many people have access to. That's great. A shortcut in that environment works fantastically. However, maybe you're syncing this brain to the cloud. You want access to the document from your iPhone uh, or from your, uh, from your iPad or from another machine that you're going to transfer this brain to. Therefore, you might want to move the file into your brain. And that's personally my personal choice, what I like to do. I simply right click and select to copy the file into the brain or move the file into the brain. So I'm going to go ahead and move the file into the brain. And you may have noticed there in the background, it just disappeared. It's no longer in my directory. It's moved into my brain. And any file, whether it's a Word document or a, a, a Excel spreadsheet, Mac-based, uh, uh, PC-based, the brain is always going to launch this in your native application. So whatever I have PDF launching in, I think they launch in a, um, uh, my preview app by default. So I always preview my PDF. There it is. That's an email uh, template that I've uh, received. I like the looks, the layout. It's clean. It's very informative. The prices really stand out. So I'm going to share that in my research with my design team. Can this is can our email confirmations have this type of layout? Um, and again, just to, uh, just to clarify, you can, let's go back and just grab, uh, here's a pricing chart, Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to drag and drop that into the brain. Again, by default, that is going to have a, be a shortcut, um, but I can always right click and move the file into the brain. Now, here is where we have a few key differences between the Mac version and the PC version. Uh, I'm going to grab this launch party PDF, and rather than just drag and drop it into the brain, I'm going to hold down the Alt key. So I click on Alt on my keyboard, and I drag and drop launch party, and notice that launch party has been copied from its original location into the brain. And that's Alt key on your Mac, a uh, PC user actually uses the uh, control key. So they control drag and drop. Mac user is going to use the Alt key drag and drop. Control is used for something else, uh, so the Alt key is what works on the Mac to uh, bring in a copy of that file. So it's a nice little shortcut if you just want to, when you're working on your Mac, do an Alt drag and drop of that particular attachment. So now I've got a Word doc or an Excel spreadsheet, I've got a couple of PDFs, and I'm really filling out this research area pretty nicely. Now I know also 
that there are different types of storage files and ways to store files and information, uh, specifically some that Mac users are really keen to. And so I'm actually going to pass presenter over to Patrick. And Patrick has a few more ways of attaching documents. I won't give it away. You probably know what it is. But Patrick, go ahead. And uh, I'm going to pass presenter to you. And you're going to show us another type of popular document type uh, that we like to store in our brain, specifically Mac users. Great. Yeah. So what I like to do actually is keep uh, a lot of my files in Dropbox. And I know a lot of users out there also like to do the same thing. And that allows me to use those files on my machine at home or on the go using the Dropbox app. Um, so what I can do is this is my Dropbox folder here with a project proposal that I'm looking to add into my Time Warner uh, client section. So I can actually just right click on this attachment and grab the share Dropbox link. If I just click on this, it'll actually copy a link directly to that uh, file and I can paste that into my brain. So now if you if you go to that thought, you'll see that I have a link directly to the Dropbox file and I can click on that to open it and view it. Um, but what's even better is um, I actually just like to uh, drag and drop the Dropbox files into my brain directly from the Dropbox folder. And that's pretty much the same, that works the same way as dragging uh, files from your machine into the brain. It'll create a link to that file in the Dropbox folder. So now you'll see if I look at the link down here, I have a link to that Dropbox file and I can open this and edit it just like I would any other file that's on my machine, any other Word document or PDF or Excel spreadsheet. And when I save those changes, it's going to save those changes into my Dropbox folder and sync them just like I would be working on them uh, outside of the brain or if I'm just looking at my Dropbox folder here and opening the file. Um, another thing that I really like um, is I can add my Google Drive documents in much the same way. I can right click and grab the link by choosing the get link option here. I can copy that and I can then paste that into my brain as well. And I have pretty much the same, the same example here. I have a link directly to that document on Google Drive. So now I can open that, make changes. Oh, well, it looks like I don't have access to this in the account that I'm in. But once, I, once I'm in the correct account, I'll be able to view that document directly in Google Drive and make changes to it. And I'll always have a link to that in my brain. And that's actually a good point, Patrick, is that just because you have a document linked into your brain uh, doesn't mean if you share your brain, because we are going to be talking about sharing right. brains later, just because you're sharing your brain doesn't mean they have access to all those Dropbox uh, files that you've just linked to with the URL. They still need to be able to right. uh, have access to that file, whether it be shared or, or some type of access into that file. That's, so that is a good point. Right. And another uh, great feature that is Mac exclusive is uh, the quick look feature. Um, many of you know that you can actually quick look files just by pressing space. You can quickly look and see what the what's in the file. But you can do the same thing in the brain when you have a file in the brain. You can right click and choose quick look and I can quickly just look at this document and dismiss it and see what's in there. Go to another document and do the same thing. So it's a great way to uh, quickly get a view at the documents that I have attached to my brain without actually having to open them. And uh, that's great. I'm glad, glad you brought up the, uh, uh, the quick look just because that is, again, a unique um, feature that is unique to us Mac users. Uh, the PC has nothing like that, so they can't right click and go into that quick look. Uh, they actually have to, on the PC, launch the, uh, the actual application. Um, another fantastic feature that the brain has is now we've been dragging and dropping files and documents uh, into the brain. Let me go back to uh, the thought, the area where I call home again. 
let's start in with some presentations. Um, now, I noticed, first off, on my other See the World ad campaign, I had some great presentations. Um, some of these are just introducing ourselves. So what is eSolutions all about? And um, how can we help uh, your company succeed and so forth in the future? And one of them is the first round presentation, sort of our initial uh, presentation. I don't need to recreate that document. It's already there. Um, I know it exists. So under presentations, I'm going to link to first round. And I simply type, start typing in the first few letters of that thought name, and there it is. I've got an existing thought, and see if I type in less letters, there's all my thoughts that start with the letter F, and as I continue typing, um, it filters down until it finds first round, what exactly whatever I'm typing in. This is a great way in the brain to reduce clutter and duplication of thought. Um, and again, another area where you'll notice that thoughts have multiple parents because it's been used in, in this case, multiple presentations um, or, or presented to multiple clients. So I can link, I'll just double click, and now that first round, um, I have access to it from this particular thought. I can review it, make sure that this is the presentation we want to use for our client. If it's not, I want to make some modifications of some type or create a whole new uh, presentation from scratch. Let's say we want to call this presentation uh, Call Home Again Phase 1. Now, this presentation doesn't exist yet. Uh, there's nothing to drag and drop into the brain. So I've got a couple of options. Now I can go down to, you know, I've got Word installed. I can launch Word, create my document, save it on the desktop, drag it into the brain, move it into the brain. Um, there's a great time saver, and that's simply to, in the brain, when we right-click on a thought, you can select to add an attachment. So I select add attachment, and from this list, I can create a document or a template. Now notice, and I specifically cleared out um, all of my applications um, from this particular list because that's how new Mac users will see this list. This list is not pre-populated uh, for the Mac user. We need to create our own templates. And to do that, I can open up templates and follow these on-screen instructions. Exactly what you're seeing me do is, is what's uh, uh, written out there. So this opens up a folder and anything that I drop into this folder um, will become available to me for a template. And let's say I already have, so I can create a blank Word document and just call it Word and drop it in. Um, I actually have a Word document. It's going to be, um, uh, this is actually a presentation, but I'll use this contract doc and drop it in. And notice, because I'm using this type of document over and over again, I can go ahead and close that. Now that I've brought it into that folder, now I'll right-click and select to add an attachment. And I've got my Word contract um, default document. Whatever I've included in that document, maybe it's got a header at the top, or it's an actual full-length document with just blanks that need to be filled in along the way. If I'm going to be using that as a template over and over again. Um, I just right-click on a thought, select add attachment, and click on this templates button to add those templates and follow these instructions and add those templates. So blank Word documents, blank Excel spreadsheets, whatever type of uh, Word editing software you Mac users use, you can add a blank document of that type or of any type, a blank Photoshop or, or a blank Camtasia file. Uh, they can all be added here into this list and to populate it and meet your needs, It'd be the templates that you use uh, in your day-to-day -day, uh, usage of the brain. Um, so finally, the next step I wanted to share with you is that all of these documents that we're bringing into the brain, links to web pages, uh, links to um, all different types of, of online content, local content, it's all automatically indexed in the brain, so therefore it's searchable. So anytime I do a search within the brain, I'm looking through not just my thought names, but also the content and the Mac, once again, has a unique feature that our PC users uh, are not getting. Let me go ahead and do a search for the word power. So when I type in the word power, 
first, right above the search box, I see an instant search result of, of all thoughts that contain that particular word. Now, I can click on one of those. So there's Power 5. This is actually a server that's hosted in Los Angeles. And I've got sort of a network map also included in this, this very extensive brain uh, model that I'm using. So I can find out what's running on that server, what applications have been updated, and so forth. Um, so that's fantastic. But let's stay focused on the search. I'll do power. And rather than click on one of these thoughts that contain the word power, I'm going to click on the search button. And the search, once again, it's not only looking through all of my actual thought names, but all the content, whether it's a shortcut um, or an actual internal, um, uh, internal attachment, internal file, or even if it's on the web. And my search is a little slow right now, so I'm going to let that go. And while that search is running, I'm going to talk really quickly about some of these other tools have. And we talked about the notes, that each thought can have its own notes. Uh, the thought tab is where we'll see all of the file attachments uh, for a thought. So if I roll back to uh, one of my thoughts, for example, call home again, and I go into that presentations area. Um, once again, the presentation area for this particular thought with this file attachment, I can also create duplicates of this thought. If I'm just making subtle modifications, um, I can also select that thought. And there my search just popped in. So sorry to take you from one subject to the next, but I didn't want to waste any time while the search was running. It's a very large brain, and the search probably hasn't been run in a little while in this brain. But here on the first round thought, once again, I can right-click to copy. I can also use these buttons up above and paste. So I can have multiple attachments on the same thought. This is a really great uh, feature and a great usage, usage of version control. So I can have my PowerPoint presentation version 1, version 2, version 3, all the different versions listed out with details over here in the notes on what changes were made for each particular version. So round 1 had a, a particular file, round, whoops, round one and leave all the details behind that happened on round one, round two, and so forth. Uh, so my notes has some critical, uh, very useful information, and the multiple different files are located over here on the right. Let's jump back to that search now. Didn't mean to confuse everyone, just didn't want to waste any time waiting for the search to run. So here's our search. Um, and now that it's been run, it's going to uh, go a lot faster. I'll do a few more searches. But as you can see, there are my thought matches. My content matches down below. So again, you can see here I'm uh, bringing in content out of notes, out of documents. There's Dell website, tradeshowweek.com, and so forth. And here is our unique setting that we have just for Mac users, that we integrate through Spotlight with your mail, address book, and iCal. So I'm not only searching through brain content, I'm also searching through other content that hasn't even made it into the brain, but may be helpful to me. Um, so here's John O'Brien. What does John O'Brien have to do with the search that I did for power? Well, I'm, I can click on open, so I'm going to actually open my address book and go directly to the John O'Brien contact. And there I can see in his email, O'Brien at millpower.com. He works for a company called Mill Power. Um, so obviously that's a, a, a pinpoint match, and so it shows up in my search results. And I can do the same for, for emails as well. And if I see something that I like, here you can see I've got a meeting with Barbara Powers. It's a team review, and we're specifically going to be talking about this presentation. So I want to add a little link to that, in this case, an iCal message. I can do this with a, an address book um, or an actual email. You can see there are all my emails down below. But in this case, I'm going to use an iCal event. Um, I can open it to review it. I know this is the one I'm wanting uh, to add. So I just simply click on Add, and I get a new thought that is linked to my current active thought um, as a nice reminder for me. This hasn't been moved into the brain. Nothing's changed in iCal. But now when I go down to my presentations for this client, I'll see that I've got a meeting with Barb Powers. It's a team review to discuss, hey, are these first-round presentations working for us for our clients and, and uh, get a little feedback and see what changes we need to do. So once again, a great way of grabbing existing content 
that you have on your Mac and bringing that directly into the brain. Now let's go ahead now and talk about some of the other features we have, such as tags and thought types. Now you saw I created a thought type earlier for my call home again, there's see the world. Um, I'm gonna create a new link, I'll uh, come off of call home again, and I'm gonna create a, a new link to, uh, let's say we have a vendor that is working with us to make this presentation really special for our clients, um, but I don't have a vendor thought type. I'm gonna start hiring a lot of different vendors uh, for different things within our organization that I can really think help us uh, save time and, and, and lower costs. So I'm gonna create a link over to, we'll just say um, Jerry Smith, or say Gary Smith. That is the name of my new subcontractor that's going to be working with us. Now I can create the thought type or link to a thought type but as you can see, I don't have a thought type yet for vendors. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that thought. There's Gary. And now I'm gonna right click on the thought and create a new thought type. So I like to do this by doing a right click thought type. You can also come up here to your uh, tools in the brain uh, and display a thought type list, get to a new type from there. But right clicking works really great for me. So my thought type, a new thought type for a vendor, or we'll call them a subcontractor. Now for subcontractor, I can also uh, add an icon. So you can see here on the thought tool tab for the subcontractor thought type. I know this is a thought type because if you look really closely, you see this little halo, this little glow around that thought that you don't see around other thoughts. That's telling me that that is a thought type. Um, and when I click on the thought, I can click the little plus sign and the brain has a series of, of thought icons that we can choose from. I can even narrow this down by category. I specifically am looking for a people icon. That's gonna help me. And let's say I have a little icon. I can have some fun with this. I'll create this little knight in shining armor. He's really gonna help me out there. So that is my new thought type for subcontractor. And I can change the color as well. So all of my subcontractors appear in this light purple color there in the brain. So now you can see my call home again. I'm gonna have other people linked over to this. I'm gonna have Sarah from, uh, from marketing is going to be linked to this thought. So there's Sarah linked. Maybe Vin is going to be helping us on this one as well. But I am clearly going to be able to see that Gary is the subcontractor that's working on, on this account. Whereas Sarah, VP of marketing, she's an executive and Vin is our manager that's handling this account. Let's say Vin is taking the lead on call home again. Now you can see Vin is a manager. He's got a lot of different tasks. He's a graphic artist for Time Warner, but for this ad campaign, he is going to take the lead. Therefore, I want to identify that on the link between the two thoughts. So not just on, I'm not gonna change Vin's thought type to lead. He's not always the lead. Sometimes he's just advising on different, uh, with different clients or just working as a graphic artist. Now he's really taking a step up, he's the lead, so I click on the link between the two thoughts so I can define his relationship with this project. And notice when I click on a link, it really brings that focus in, it's highlighting just the link between those two thoughts, and everything else on the brain is grayed out. And if you notice very closely, my thought tool tab down below has changed to link. So I can identify this link by either creating a new thought type, I can do that on the link tool tab. Uh, so I can create a new thought type. If lead is going to be a thought, or excuse me, a link type that I'm using over and over again. This is just a one-time uh, event. So I'll just type in a label. He's the lead. And I can even, once again, change the color to make that stand out. So I'll give that a nice light blue link. And uh, you can, clearly see the difference. I've added some great context. I know the relationship between Vin and Call Home Again versus his relationship with just the client, Time Warner. Everything that goes through Time Warner, he's gonna be the graphic artist for. But for this project, for this ad campaign, Vin is the lead. So again, some another great, uh, or another great tool that you can use to identify relationships between thoughts. And additionally, I'd also like to point out that you can click on the link between two thoughts and add notes on the link. So 
So if there's just something specific that you want to keep track of regarding the relationship between two thoughts, those might go on the link, whereas your notes that are just all about Vin and his tasks and accomplishments, that's on Vin. Everything about call home again, that's on the thought, but it's just on the, the relationship between the two. So this is Vin's first attempt. Uh, you can see I've got sort of a, a bizarre font set up here. I should have changed that. Uh, but uh, there's the default notes uh, font. But you can see I can keep those unique notes about uh, specifically the relationship between Vin and Call Home Again there, and I'll see it only when I hover over the link between the two. So this is his first attempt at taking the lead on a new project. So that's worth keeping track of how well he does and what his success is. A few more things that I'd like to point out are the thought tags. Um, thought tags are very closely related to a thought type, but there are some unique differences. Uh, for a thought type, you can only assign one. So for example, Vin is a manager. Um, um, he's going to remain a manager until he gets promoted or moves to a different department, and then he'll change the thought type. But there may be different action items um, or qualities about Vin that I want to keep track of with the thought tags down below. So let's say Vin is located in, uh, I've got a lot of uh, people keeping track of in New York. Vin is in our Los Angeles item, or Los Angeles office. So I'm going to create a new thought tag for Los Angeles. And tag Vin as Los Angeles. I can do that with the different people to keep track of which office they're working out of. Jim uh, is also one of our business developer, development managers. Uh, let's say Jim is working out of London. So creating a few thought tags, and then when I come down to business development managers under in the sales department, I've got Jim over in London and Vin over in Los Angeles. And if someone is specifically asking me about, hey, I need to get in contact with uh, you know someone in your Los Angeles office that can help me with the following task. Obviously, these tags are going to help me go directly to Vin is in Los Angeles. He's the guy that you're going to want to talk to. Um, I like to do this also for um, different projects that I'm working on. And I'm going to create a new thought tag for a different urgency level. Now, there are different ways that we can do this. You can set up urgency levels that are important, not important. A lot of people like to say tier one, tier two, tier three. Uh, you can have some fun with it. Is it DEPCON one, DEPCON five? I'll say, um, I'll just have three simple ways of describing how urgent this is. Is it a green light project, a yellow light project, or a red light project? So this is green light. And actually, I'm going to put a little character in front so I can group them all together. I'm just going to put the at symbol. So I know this is a green light project, whereas see the world, that's our old retired um, ad campaign. I'll create a thought type there called red light. And I'll use again the at symbol just to keep them grouped together in all of my tags. That's a red light project. Now the great thing about creating these thought tags is not only can I visually identify, if I go back to call home again, I can see right away, hey, that's a green light project. That's, this deserves all of my attention right now. Let's say I want to assign that green light not only to projects, but also to customers. Google needs to review their contract uh, right away. This is, to me, a green light event, an event that needs to happen right away. Um, and then also, if I go down to, uh, let's go into my operations and my IT team, uh, network map, we need to review all of our different uh, CRM apps and make sure those are fully functional and up to date. Again, that's a green light event that needs to take place. I need to assign someone to that. Now that I have a few thoughts assigned as a green light, when I log in on Monday morning or at the beginning of my day, I'm actually going to go to my thought tags and click on green light. What are my green light events? I've got three of them. I've got a, a, a project, an ad campaign for a client. Um, I've got a review that needs to be done on our CRM apps. And finally, I need to contact a client to make sure that they're going to renew for next year. So three key events, those are all right front and center green light. Um, 
I know Mac, Mac users uh, enjoy, again, thinking outside of the box and constructively and staying on top of, of information as it's coming your way. Uh, Getting Things Done, a very, very popular book and methodology uh, used to, again, stay focused in our, our busy lives. And one of, the, uh, uh, one of the tools in getting things done is identifying whether something is on the runway, 10,000 feet, 20,000 feet, 30,000 feet. How far away is it from the runway? And anything that's on the runway, that is top urgent. Uh, David Allen, the author of the book, actually uses the brain. And if you're interested, uh, we did a webinar with David Allen while he was using his brain, and he showed us some of his thought tags. And he used those thought tags that way. Is this on the runway, or is this way up at 10,000 feet? Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a life goal. Uh, I don't need to worry about it on a day-to-day -day basis, but I just need to keep it in mind. So I tag it accordingly here in the brain. So a couple of different ways that you can use those thought tags and thought types. Now, before we run out of time, I really quickly want to show you the reports. Uh, the reports are just a great feature in the brain. Again, another way of navigating uh, through information in the brain. You can see I can scroll down and go directly to, there's Gary Smith. I created that thought earlier today. And uh, I can look at my brain basically as an alphabetical list. I need to get right to my marketing budget. There it is. Um, I can filter this list. I can filter by thought type, by thought tag. So again, if I need to see all of my ad campaigns, uh, here's a great example. Uh, my marketing director walks into the office and says, let's take a look at all your ad campaigns. I don't want to go client to client. Do I have any there? Do I have any here? I want to go directly to all of my ad campaigns. And the report can help you get there. So I can say, all right, a new wave ad campaign, I'm just starting on that. That's for our client, Google, and uh, here's what I've accomplished so far. So I can get right to specific thoughts that are tagged or typed uh, uh, accordingly. And I can also run special and customized reports as well. So let's say I want to find all thoughts with uh, PowerPoint attachments in the brain. I've got a lot of them, 24, so I can get directly to those 24 PowerPoints. Or PowerPoint thoughts that have been activated within the past week or the past day and so forth. So modified. I haven't modified any PPT thoughts, uh, but maybe if I do attachment uh, PDF. So here's PDF thoughts that have been modified within the past week. Well, some of them I modified today because I just brought them into the brain, so there they are. But if I look at all of my PDFs, um, um, you know, I may have, or PDF documents, I may have much, much, or many more. And, of course, you can go into custom to build and customize your own report, save it, and run it again and again in the future as your brain continues to grow. So some great modifications that could be done there. And then finally, the calendar tab is what I like to use to simply just set up thought reminders. So uh, let's go back, or let's stay on this one. Here's my ad campaign for Google. I'm just getting started. But I want a reminder that I need to present this in one week with this thought as the active thought. I click to add a new event and uh, first uh, presentation due. And I select the date. I'm actually going to make this back in time one week ago so you can see what the reminders look like. A lot of modifications that you can do here for keeping track of projects and events in your brain. So daily, monthly, weekly reminders and so forth. I'll go ahead and say, yes, I want the brain to send me my reminder. So I'll save that. And when this brain is open, I'm, I'm presented with any past due reminders I have. And I can set how soon before the event uh, happens. In this case, I'm being reminded I'm one week past due because I made it for last week. And that's what my reminders look like. So I'll go ahead and snooze that. And if I have this open, you'll see it pop open again here in about five minutes. But I don't want to forget talking a little bit about collaboration. Um, because I mentioned earlier, if you're sharing your brain, uh, if you need access to your brain online uh, or if you need access to your brain on your iPhone or iPad, um, what we can do is synchronize our brain with the cloud. So everything that you've seen Patrick and I do today, we've been doing on our local machines, uh, but we can take this brain and actually sync it. So I'm going to click on the sync button, and I am logged into my brain account. I'll say OK, and that starts the sync process. While that's running, I'm actually going to open Safari, 
Safari crashed on me earlier, so hopefully it's healthy once again. I'll open Safari, and if that's uh, not opening, I'll simply type in here to open up my brain on my iPhone. So here is my eSolutions Consulting brain um, on my phone. And as you can see, I'm right there on the network map, which I recently was on here on my phone looking up some data. And all the attachments, all the uh, files, all the notes that you put into the brain, it's all there once it's been synced to the cloud on your iPhone. So I'm actually going to first take a look at it online. So there, I just went back to Nike. Now I'll go to thebrain.com. And on thebrain.com, I can log into my account. And it is worth noting, um, a lot of you are probably on multiple platforms. You might have to work on a PC at the office and have a Mac machine or two. So all the synchronization um, that we're discussing today is cross-platform. And that could mean multiple Mac machines. It could mean PC to Mac to Linux, uh, another operating system we're on, or just um, from your uh, desktop to maybe your iPad or iPhone as well. And here you can see that's correct. And so I've got access to my brain online. So now notice um, it, it may look the same to you. So here's my brain on my desktop. And here is my brain online. And if I go back to, let's go to that Google thought. So I can do a search, go directly to a specific thought. So there's that thought for Google. And all the information that I have there on my uh, on my Google account is also available to me here on the brain as well. So on the online version as well. And once again, open up my iPhone and here I'll do a search. I'm just simply opening up the search and awesome. I'll type in and Google. Matt, I'm glad yeah. that you're covering that because Jack was actually just asking, and I know we're going to get to the Q and A anyway, is there a way for me to use uh, the brain on Mac, PC, and iPad concurrently? And the answer is yes. Just set them all up to auto sync. And uh, that's what we're designed for. We really want to be platform and agnostic. So Matt, just addressing that specifically, Jack's question as you're demoing would be great. Absolutely. I've got all three open right now. The only thing I don't have open right now is this same brain on a PC, but I could do that on another PC. Um, uh, in my office. But you can see I've got the brain open three separate locations uh, right now on my iPhone online and um, installed locally on my, uh, on my desktop computer. I can install the brain on my Mac and uh, when I open up, or excuse me, on my PC, when I open up my PC, um, I can select to open a brain. And if I select here, file and open brain, I'll see not only the brains that I have running locally. So you can see eSolutions Consulting right at the top of my list. I've got a local version and an online version. Down below, I've got some brains that are only local. And if I go even further down, I've got some brains that are only currently available online. So from that PC, I install the brain and log in with my account information. And I'll see all the brains that have synced to the cloud. And now, let's say I want my Science Heroes brain on, on that particular machine, or in this case on this one. I click on Online and download this for local use. So now the brain that started out on another platform, on another machine, I think to the cloud. And in just a moment, I'll have access, full access, to that particular um, uh, brain right here, in this case, on my MacBook. So I'll have all the internal attachments accessible uh, to me that were internal in that brain, as well as all the web links and content, thought types, graphics, and they'll all be there for you. And I think with that, Shelly and Patrick, uh, I can send it back over to you for uh, any questions uh, that also came up in the, uh, in the QA. Excellent. Yes, we do have a number of questions, but real quick before we move back, uh, Patrick is actually a lot of questions on can we connect to files on iCloud and uh, a couple other file types that I'm going to have Patrick show. But before we go there, I just want to go back to 
the how it's working across multiple devices because that there's a lot of questions there um, so actually uh, Jack had a question in other words can all three devices be used concurrently by a person's work group so the way it works and this is getting into licensing and technology technology yeah. absolutely we're designing it so your brain can be ubiquitous you should be able to get it on the web you should be able to you know, get it on your, uh, like I'll just open my brain right here on my iPhone 6, uh, as well as my PC and my Mac. Now, the only issue you were having, Jack, I guess, if you wanted your assistant to contribute to it, you know, one of two ways. If you, if you want to give her or him your password, they can do that. But, I mean, if you're doing a work group, what you'll need is team brain service, where each user has their own um, license and synchronization and then you can actually select the user so Matt I don't know if you want to quickly show how to demo team brain and also just to point out as far as some of you that might be on older versions all the synchronization um, we have the license and then the cloud services combo option for 299 you will need our synchronization services of course to synchronize uh, across all your machines um, That's right. So, and if you are upgrading your account uh, to Team Brain Services, in other words, you want to be able to collaborate. And Shelly and I do this, uh, both of us working on the same brain at the at the same time and making changes. And all those changes are kept in sync through WebBrain. Uh, but I can go to my account page, and for any brain that I've synced to the cloud, I can go directly to the settings for that particular brain. And I apologize, my, uh, my machine is probably slowing down because of the uh, uh, GoToMeeting bandwidth. So I just got a little warning about that if you're not And And Matt, let now. us know if it is, because we can pass ball to pass okay. it to show any of these things. So no worries there. I just thought since we're on sync, I'll throw those questions to you. But Patrick can more than handle all of these, plus the, the file integration ones that we're going we're gonna to cover that people had some questions Absolutely. on. Yeah, if we could send it over to Patrick, Patrick can show the settings for any brain that he has. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah Patrick, let me go ahead and make you presenter. And uh, Patrick and I, of course, were going through the Q&A, and there were a number of great questions that came up uh, that we're going to ask. And Patrick, I don't know if you want to start with just opening up your um, brain cloud account, just to review that for sure. the users, and maybe just without getting into too many details, just show a team brain and the team brain settings. Um, you know, we don't want to make this too much about Team Brain, but just to show that to all the users, that would be great. So here I have the, the brain I've been working on. And if you click this drop down menu here, right next to the name of the brain, you can go into the settings. And this is where I can share the brain with Matt or Shelly if I want them to be able to view this brain. Oops. And then the other Getting thing is below that here. there's a checkbox for all team members, um, which you can right. set up so that you just have that if you're doing a specific team brain. But this is kind of cool because a lot of Mac users like to go one-on-one, -on -one, so you can <clears> type in a specific email or um, right. go ahead and, and share team. And then above that, I also just want to point out brain visibility for publishing. Uh, most of you will probably want to collaborate privately. However, that being said, Mac users, a lot of education professors, uh, high school teachers, university students, um, just real simply will publish their brain publicly. Now, a public brain is in read-only mode. You'll still have to, if you want to give people editor access, have to set up a team brain, but it is really great for sharing URLs. So, Patrick, I don't know if you want to open one of your public brains and just show uh, some of the users how to share a URL or how to access a brain. And each thought in your public brain has a URL that you can actually send to people to share links publicly, uh, making it really easy for people to see sort of big picture concepts uh, and so forth. Oh, and this is the Tudor Dynasty example. Right. This is actually this is one a, of my a, more, a more popular, popular brain. public brains. <laughs> yeah. It is. So I can, I can just right click on the background and choose the share option. And like Shelly was saying, that gives me a link, a short link that I can share to this specific thought, or I can even just share directly to this brain. Copy this and, and send that over to anyone I want to share it with. And All they right, don't great. they don't need to have a brain account to view mm -hmm. this brain. They can just go to that link and view it. Right. So there are different 
different levels of sharing, just to point out. If it's just like I want to give my classroom access to a brain I created on, you know, um, the U.S. presidents, I, I probably pick this option because it's, it's public information and it's going out to my class. It's just going to make it easier to send a URL. If I'm working on competitive intelligence with uh, Matt and Patrick, then I'm going to go to the private option and just add them as two team members. So a lot of possibilities for different access controls, different levels of participation. And, uh, you know, we do offer free support to all users. So for those of you that have any questions on the best way to set up a brain for any level of collaboration that you want, uh, more than happy. It's also worth pointing out uh, that the free version, you can actually publish a free brain, which a lot of students and teachers do. Um, our free version doesn't let you publish files or add files, but you can get away Jerry McCall's brain, for instance, which is mostly just thoughts and uh, web links, and it's got over, I think, 260,000 of them. That's technically a free brain. So uh, while uh, you know you want to get the most out of your brain, and I do recommend the Brain Pro for tagging and, and in-depth task management, for those of you who are students on a budget or teachers, I do want to point that out because that is a very, uh, you know, we have a very uh, large and dedicated user group in the Mac community. Um, of that type, and then we also do offer educational discounts for the pro, the combo, and upgrades as well. So, um, you know, kind of as a corollary to that, just moving on, earlier in the session there was a question from RD, and it was on the iPhone, uh, which I'll pull up my iPhone here, I see examples, but I don't seem to be able to touch and open them, which um, actually you should be able to get to these examples. And most importantly, a second part of RD's question was, I don't see these examples on the desktop version. So um, first of all, uh, let me see if I can do this. You should just be able to touch, and it should open. See, it's opening. So if you're having issues, RD, on this, do let us know. Um, should be, And then there is a way to copy this brain into your own brain on the iPhone, on the iPad, and then desktop-wise, Patrick, if you could just start a new brain and show everyone where those really valuable templates are, that would be great. Absolutely. And in regards so, to, while he's pulling that up, uh, sure. in regards to being able to tap and open, we have recently updated the iPhone app. When iOS 9 came out, we uh, updated the app. So do make sure you've got the latest version. Go to mm -hmm. your app store. Update, update and see if the brain is appearing there for you. Update the brain if you've just recently updated to iOS, and that might take care of that uh, issue with, with tapping on the, uh, the brain and making it open. Great. So um, as Shelly was saying, when I go to create a new brain, uh, you'll see these template options. As long as you have this show template brain thoughts, types, and tags options checked, and you'll see a list of them here that we have, and you can choose any Actually, one of these. Go ahead and choose education since we're talking about sure. education. Just create a brain real quick called My Education. Now, of course, this might take a, it does take a second to load because we're giving you thought types, um, tags, and all kinds of things. This is a, you know, just to stick with our education theme. So this is a, a pre built brain. Um, this is the desktop, of course. We do have examples as well on the iOS. And you're going to get tags, types, and then maybe, Patrick, um, why don't we simulate you being a student, maybe delete a few things, rename a few thoughts, just to show everyone how easy it is to work with these pre-built templates that, that do exist. Um, All right, so my, my class organization, I might want that as a jump thought instead of a child, and I can also pin it. You can rename or, thoughts and delete them. Or I them. can rename it. Yeah. to uh, my courses, for example, if I want that. Or I can, if, I, if I'm not really uh, interested in student finance right now, I can just delete that thought. And the other thing that you can do is also copy these thoughts. What a lot of people will do is they'll open a template brain as a new brain, but maybe I only want the career development and my future section. So Patrick, why don't you go ahead and show everyone how to copy a section of thoughts into another brain. Sure, so if I only want the career development and future section, I can 
start by, uh, well, if on the Mac, I can command to click on the gate, the child gate below a thought, and then I'll automatically add all of those thoughts to the selection window. If I want to make sure that I'm getting uh, all of the thoughts that are a child of career development in, in my future, as, as well as the child thoughts of the child thoughts of career development, I can right click in the selection window and choose crawl brain and modify selection. And I only want the child thoughts, so I'm going to choose child word. And I'll go ahead and choose uh, 20 clicks away just to make sure I'm going down far enough in the in the hierarchy here and then I'll click OK and that's going to add so there's only nine thoughts in total so now I can right click and then copy those selected thoughts and I can go back over to my other brain here uh, let's I'll, I'll make a thought called education so that I can put that in the education section and I'll just simply right, uh, right click on the background and choose paste thoughts. Uh, it's going to ask me if, if I'm sure I want to proceed because this can't be undone. And I'll, uh, so it looks like I have a couple of thoughts that match what I'm copying. So now I can either overwrite the, uh, those existing thoughts, um, but I don't want to do that because I, I'm not sure what uh, those thoughts are under. So I'm just going to go ahead and always create a copy. And that's just going to make a new thought for those thoughts that I'm pasting. And now you'll see I automatically have that entire section pasted right into this brain. All right, excellent, good. And then uh, just to jump back to some of those questions earlier when we were covering file management, one of them came in earlier from Simon just to talk a little bit more about specific files and sources. Um, right. Simon asked earlier, Matt has demonstrated Word. Will the brain open pages or numbers files? And w can we uh, also drag and drop from iCloud? Yeah, yes, I did see those. Uh, and I actually have a... Uh, I do, yeah. I have a pages document uh, here on my desktop, so I can just drag and drop that into my brain, just like any other document. And when I click on it, it'll open up right up in pages. This is just an example document. It's not really much in it, but as you can see, when I click on it, it does open up in pages here. And the brain is always going to launch whatever that attachment is in the operating system's native application. So you may right. be running something for word processing on your Mac, something else for word processing on your PC. That's okay as long as both of those different devices, those different operating systems, knows how to open a .doc file, for example. You're going to be able to launch that attachment. Right, right. and the and same also, thing can be done from, uh, from iCloud, actually. Um, okay. This is my iCloud drive. And I have a PDF here, I can drag and drop that into my brain as well. And then just a word about shortcut, copy, or um, storing native. Um, keep in mind um, the default when we're dragging and dropping, the brain is a very unassuming program. It will create a shortcut to where that's found. And of course, when you're linking from iCloud or Google Docs, that's great because that source is external to your computer, uh, you know, your computer drive, which is good. Uh, now the caveat there is if you're dragging and dropping a file from maybe a local drive on your desktop, you might want to either copy that file or move that internally if and only if, though this is very common for most of if you're synchro synchronizing across multiple machines. Because keep in mind, if you are, you have a file locally that you dra just dragged and dropped a shortcut in, yes, the brain will uh, remember that path and launch it and, and show you all the changes you've made and so forth. However, if you don't have access to that same drive on your PC at work or on your iPhone, then you won't be able to launch the document in our wonderful uh, document previews and so forth. So um, that's just a real question of how you want to organize your information. Um, but Patrick, maybe if you could just show drag and drop um, to move the file into the brain or copy the file for those of the users, and we do have a lot of them that are using the brain sync services across multiple machines, multiple users and devices. Sure. So if I just want to, if I want to copy the file into the brain, I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard as I, as I drag and drop it into my brain. And you'll see instead of creating a link to that, 
it automatically makes it an internal attachment. So another thing um, that uh, it, along the lines that Shelley was mentioning, as you can see, this, this file is a Dropbox file and it's linked to a location on my local machine, Dropbox uh, location. As long as I have this same exact path on a different machine, I'll still have access to this, assuming I'm, I'm logged into Dropbox there and I'll be able to keep it as a link and sync that and then sync that over to my other machine and view it there. Um, but that was, uh, that's one of the advantages of copying the link to the Dropbox file instead is that I can just have a link directly to that Dropbox document online and if I, if I don't necessarily have access to that document um, or that Dropbox folder on my other machine. So now you can right. see this as a URL attachment as opposed to an actual link to a document. Excellent. And, and actually, this gets to a little bit of, there was a question earlier, a very interesting question from Sean, and uh, basically his question, and I'll pose it to both you, uh, Patrick, and Matt, it was this, um, uh, he's talking about different versions of Mac iOS, and then he wanted to know which specific Mac features, um, tags, notification, and other Mac applications, finder, mail, contacts, notes, calendar, Safari, messages, photos, reminders, which of the Mac applications does the brain more or less make obsolete or redundant? And I thought that was a very interesting question. Uh, my response, just for the group, is the brain strength is really as an information aggregator. That's why it's funny. Um, yes, you can manage your files internally in the brain. So do you need Dropbox? No, we can synchronize files for you. But at the same time, we're happy to leverage the, the information that you have in Dropbox. So in that sense, we're very complimentary. Um, likewise, I guess another Mac application that you, you probably won't need as much is Notes. We have, we have you haven't talked about it that much, but the notes is absolutely fabulous. You can do time steps, you can do bulleted lists, and they're visual, so you can connect to each other. But again, we're more, you can drag and drop a note from your Mac into the brain. So I guess I would say um, it really depends on your application. Uh, in terms of the most, uh, I guess, the one aspect that it will probably replace the most, I would almost say it's your, your file folder system because you can organize things so associatively and visually, you're going to find yourself less, um, whether that's Explorer on your PC or in Finder on your Mac or in your whatever um, computer file system, we, we enable you to move beyond that linear structure. And just as an example of that, Patrick, if you want to click on you know, Time Warner and show a thought with multiple parents, that is very unique to the brain. The fact that you can have one piece of information effectively located in multiple categories. Um, and I think that's also kind of getting a little bit to um, Eric's question he, or comment he asked uh, later on that can we say the brain can be used to create a dynamic mind or concept mask? I have that feeling. And yes, so that's one thing that we do. We offer a conceptual view of the information that even on, you know, as wonderful as Mac OS and all the, the cool UI bells and whistles are even on your iPhone, you don't get this view. Um, so here, just on Patrick's example, you know, I can see that marketing, I can get to this online marketing campaign from a web development perspective, from a marketing perspective. Now, if this was a folder, system, whether Mac, PC, or even Dropbox for that sake, I'd have to decide where do I want this information. Here we can make connections. And then the other thing that's really cool about the brain, where we differ from a standard sort of Buzenian uh, mind map, they're flat. So I can't click to move and I can't link associatively. So Patrick, if you just want to link online marketing to a person or one other aspect, one other link, you can see that there's no limit to the number of connections. So now we've got it under Matt. Maybe Matt's leaving. And of course, if he clicks, that the interface will change. And that's why we are considered more of a dynamic mind map, where we are constantly presenting these relationships in context of your active item. So that's an important distinction as well.
All right, and then just in terms of other questions, uh, we had a lot, and I'm just scrolling through on colors, Patrick, and I know you answered some of those, but on customizing, let me go back to Eric's question earlier. Can you use, create other colors other than those available? It would be good to be able to use the colors um, used by the graphic code, and then he he didn't notice the custom color wheel, I think, so maybe for the rest of the right. users that are trying to customize, if we could cover a little bit of customization as well. Sure, so when you click on the, uh, or when you want to make a custom color for a thought, in the thought tab there's a color wheel next to the thought name that you can use to select a color. Now there are some default colors that pop up that you can choose from, but there is a custom button down here at the bottom that you can click on. And you'll see I have the, uh, a much larger color wheel that I can use. And you can also see that the, the color of the thought is changing as I move this around, which is great if you want to just get a quick preview. And then I also have um, the hue, saturation, and brightness that I can adjust. Or if I have a hex, uh, hexadecimal color code that I want to use, I can put that in here as well. So if I just want uh, white, I can just go straight to white and choose that. And Gerard is asking about the options for backgrounds of thoughts and that's really cool especially mm -hmm. if you're changing background of your background and then you might need to change the background of thoughts so um, if you could show a few of those and even some of our built-in default white, dark, all those um, that would be right. good as well. So the backgrounds um, for thoughts Right now I have my colors that I'm choosing, so the white that I just chose, for example, I have it set to display as my text uh, for the, the thought text. Now I can, in preferences under the brain tab, I can apply those colors to the background instead. And when I confirm that, you'll see that the colors that I've chosen, the custom colors that I've chosen for my thoughts will be applied to the uh, background for the thoughts instead of the text and that kind of gives it a different look that you can, uh, I mean, it's based on preference. I might find this better or more appealing to me. And as Shelly was saying that um, I can go to a specific default theme that we have available. The default that we have when you first create a brain is always the default light blue, and that's what you're gonna see in most cases. Um, and we do have a couple of other options here. As, as you can see, the online marketing, now that I have it set as white, is a little difficult to see on this theme, so I can choose a darker blue. And that makes it much, much easier to read. And uh, if you have a specific theme that you've created that you want to save, I can save that theme, give it a name. And the theme that I was using is actually a, a theme that I created or that I found on our forums, actually and save, so I have that saved as Solarized Dark, and I can always go quickly go back to that whenever I need to. And now I'm right back into the, the theme that I started in. And the themes are also great just because if you are specifically using multiple brains for different projects, so you've got one brain that you pop into for one client, another brain that you pop into for your personal information. Um, I like to set up different backgrounds on my different brains um, and it really quickly is just a nice visual identifier of which brain I happen to be in. So there's, uh, it also, you know, not only just makes your brain look nice and, and fit the theme of the subject, uh, but it also can be really used as identifying which brain you happen to uh, happen to be utilizing. All right, great. And uh, we just had we had a question from uh, Michael about our cloud services. Um, so just to to go a little bit more behind the scenes, which we're happy to do, um, regarding our security protocols and cloud provider, the Brain it uses the same encryption technologies used by governments, banks. Um, for data storage, RSA encryption is used on all attachments, and the server is hosted by Amazon Web Services, uh, you know, the world's largest provider. Um, so it's it's completely secure, and we're more than happy to send you more information on that and the way that works. And just in terms of synchronizing your brain, because we've talked about Dropbox, and Dropbox 
has come up. I do, uh, just a word of caution, you, the brain is a database. It's not a couple of files in a folder. So if you do want to synchronize your brain, you have to do it through our specially programmed and developed synchronization service. Do not try and synchronize your brain through Dropbox or any of those other services because they're not designed to synchronize databases. They're designed to synchronize files and folders. It's very simple synchronization. So while we can uh, grab stuff and link to Dropbox and Google Docs and all that, um, d uh, you, can't, you have to synchronize your brain database through the brain services, otherwise it can get corrupted. So just keep that in mind. And there was actually some questions. Well, there's these questions. Uh, as, just to let you know, we are going a little over time. We're going to probably wrap things up in the next uh, five minutes, five to ten minutes. But just great questions coming in for those of you that do have to leave. Uh, I guess we're past the hour. We are going to have a recording of this, but we're going to cover a couple more questions. And this whole reliability um, cloud issue, Jack had a question that popped up. You know, is there a way to, uh, to assure 100% backup and no corruption risk? So that's why I brought up where you can get corruption, and that's only if you're using some third-party sync on your database, so you don't want to do that. In terms of our sync, yeah, I mean, you know, we're up at 99% of the time and our cloud's up. Um, you will, a lot of people to do information security, they're using mostly their desktop, but they back their brain up, brain up to the cloud. And my goodness, I can't tell you how many times I've spilt water on a laptop or my laptop has got a virus and then I've got my new machine and all I have to do is reinstall the brain with my username and pa password, hit sync, and all my data is stored securely as a backup on the brain cloud. So in terms of backup reassurance, the cloud is absolutely fantastic. And then conversely, for those of you that, you know, maybe are still skeptical of the cloud, um, you can do your own local machine back, uh, backups. And those of you that are just have the pro license, a lot of you, a couple of you mentioned that, you know, you're not allowed to use the cloud in your corporate environment, then actually create that brain zip. And Patrick, I'd like you to cover how to create a brain zip. That can serve as your backup. Um, that was something we did, you know, gosh, I think that was in early 2000s or late 90s, you know, before clouding options were around, a lot of people would create the brain zip or use their USB to, to move their brain around. So I guess that is, that's the old school way, and that is still something that you guys, for those of you that clouding isn't an option. And the cool thing about the brain, unlike a lot of mind mapping technologies that do force you to go on the cloud, is we do have a very powerful desktop client. So for whatever reason, if you don't have the ability to use the cloud, um, certainly um, take advantage of the desktop. Uh, there's a rich set of features, and you, know, you can use brain zips to email to people and so forth. Right, so the way I got to this was uh, if you just go to file and choose create brain zip, that's going to bring up the create brain zip options. Now, and I can, I mean, I can include the file attachments, which I'm most likely, most likely going to want to do, and then I can also include the search index. And I actually, I like to date my brain zips, especially if I'm creating a lot of them. So I'll just quickly add the date to the end of the name here and then click OK. And that's going to compress the brain zip. You'll see notification of that. And that's it. The brain zip is created. I can go to the folder and, and see the brain zip in that folder if I need to, just to verify that it's there. So here, here's the brain zip that I just created. You can see that's one brain for everything and the date that I added. All right, great. Yeah, and I guess you want to be really ultra secure, you do your backup on the cloud and you do your brain zip locally and, you know, you can have, you know, as many backups as you want, um, you know, so that we really never don't have any issues with, uh, you know, people getting access to their brains, especially if they're using the cloud. It is a nice uh, extra little security uh, measure for your brain, especially if you're traveling all over the world with a laptop that, that can get damaged. Uh, and then we just had another interesting comment from Eric. Uh, he says, I'm using the Pro version on my Mac. The more I use it, the more I like it. It fits perfectly with the Mac user's mind in a very flexible way to integrate, manage any type of information. It's absolutely fantastic for managing multiple projects in parallel and collecting information on any, secondar any secondary source. 
You know, and I, I would agree with that. And I do like that Eric brought up the idea of managing multiple projects. And to that end, Patrick, I'd love for you to show Instant Activate, uh, making sure you have can move quickly from one project to the next. Uh, because I actually have one large brain that I do a lot of uh, project management in, and I love how I can switch gears very quickly. And that's another feature that's quite unique to the brain's dynamic interface as well. Right. Well, I, I do have this brain set as a brain button right now. Um, don't have any others, but I can just quickly go into any of my other brains here. I just close this one. But I'm just talking about the instant activate feature, like activating different thoughts. Oh, oh but you want to you oh, show right. a good brain. Okay. So the one brain for everything is great. Well, no, just, I can do that here. Yeah. So if, I, if I'm looking for a specific thought, I can just quickly type that in and choose that from the, the results that show up here. So I'll do it a little slower this time. So I'm looking for my sales research thought, for example. I can just quickly start typing in the, the name of that thought, and then you'll see that it shows up here as a result. And when I click on that, it takes me right to the thought without having to navigate through the hierarchy of the brain to find it. Yes, exactly. So the funny thing is, as great as we are at visualizing and we have that beautiful visual navigation, very powerful search. I use it a lot. It's great for client management. So if Red Cross calls or a client you have, just type in their name and boom, all their information appears. I actually know podcasters and webcasters that use it for visual scripting. So there's some really in, uh, interesting applications with the combination of search and, and the visualization. And then uh, we did have a question from Jack that's uh, a good question as far as is there any other tool that can read brain files? Um, so, um, Matt, I'll let you address this a little more. It's a little bit beyond the scope today, but you, yes, you can export. And, Patrick, actually, I don't know if you want to pull up all of our exporting options just in the file menu uh, for people yeah, to see. there are several different ex exporting options, and one of them is exporting to XML. Um, so exporting the brain to, uh, to XML, if XML is something that you are skilled in and you know about, uh, you can export the brain to, uh, to XML, and it includes everything, it, the documents, the graphics, the colors, the links, it's all in that XML. Um, and just a small cluster of thoughts, five or six thoughts, can turn out to be 10 to 20 pages of XML because there's a lot of information uh, in there. So that's something you want to know more about that's definitely a more advanced feature just write into support at the brain.com and we'll send you some documentation on the XML export but as Patrick showed you there you can also export to a file and folder structure so you don't get the same obviously type of you know the file and folder is no way of showing you jump thoughts and multiple parents and, and, and things of that nature uh, but you can um, if if you are interested export uh, do a sample export of your brain to a folder structure. To, so every thought becomes a folder, and attachments on that thought are, are located in the folder, and subfolders are child thoughts and so forth on down the line. So we do have right. some and great then Just really quickly, import. Uh, mm -hmm. import, yeah, if we want to go yeah. up on the import, uh, that is very interesting. And we're at the end of our uh, webinar, so we're not going to cover all these, but you can import folders files. Also other mind mapping, mind maps can go into the brain as well, text outlines. Um, so there's a lot you can do with import and export and we're more than happy to uh, send anyone who wants uh, additional information or set up a support call to go over these options. And we covered a lot of ground today. Um, I do want to remind everyone, tomorrow we have our Brain 101 class. It's actually going to be hosted by Matt. Uh, I don't know, Matt, maybe you should go Go on your, your Mac tomorrow. I'm not sure if we want to do that Mac or PC, um, but most of the functionality is the same. So if we haven't covered anything, or if you're a new user and you just want to learn how do I get started, you know, with the basics ground up, that's the class for you. Uh, so do join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And real quick, Matt and Patrick, any other words of wisdom or features we didn't cover or anything else we want to uh, to, to, to to uh, convey to our attendees be before we close our session today? 
Sure. Well, I noticed that someone also wrote in about any additional uh, support references that may be available out there. Absolutely. Our website, uh, thebrain.com, has some great, great resources, and there are some recordings uh, of previous webinars as well as tutorials that are very helpful and very topic-specific. So uh, feel free to browse through uh, our website to look for any additional information you may be searching for. And if you can't find it there, we are always available at support at thebrain.com. All right. I think with that, we're going to close today's session. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. Uh, and we hope to see you again on future Brain Technologies events. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.